Hey everybody, welcome back to Real Life Fishing. Um, today we've got our Real Life Fishing glass, courtesy of uh, my buddy Scott from Thankful Outdoors. Check his content out. But uh, in the glass today we've got Bellmead Reserve. Uh, if you just watched the last video, yep, same, same one here. I'm just shooting a couple back to back for you. So, But in any event, this video here, uh, I wanted to do a little walkthrough of the shop uh, and kind of show you guys some of the, the tools that I'm using um, you know, I've, I've been starting to get some questions from folks about, uh, you know, what, what, what do I need to get started or, you know, what, what did you purchase to get started and things like that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through a lot of the, the real commonly used uh, tools and, and things to, you know, think about having in the shop. Not all of this is necessary, but, uh, you know, a, a good amount of it will, uh, will certainly help with making things easier. Um, and I don't have all of the tools and things yet that I'm probably going to end up with, but uh, I'll show you guys what I do have so far and, and so we'll go through that. So, Okay, so what do I have? I've got uh, a couple of airbrushes here. These are Iwata Eclipse HPCSs. Um, got two of them, two different size needles. Just I, I like those for painting and having two helps speed the process along. I don't have to stop and clean things every time I want to change one color and go back to the original color and so forth. I can just spray this one, then a little of the other color, and then go back to the first color. So that's that's always helpful. Um, I've got a whole bunch of helping hands is what these contraptions here are called. This one I modified. I ordered three of them and took the, the bar on the bottom out uh, to lengthen them to hold the baits up higher. You'll want a whole bunch of spring clamps uh, these are large ones, but you know, I normally use the small ones. I've been working on some some special stuff that uh, I'm not ready quite ready to reveal yet that I had the large ones over here, but um, I've got a paint mixer So that's pretty cool. You get that on Amazon saves you no more tennis elbow um, Got all my paint over here so a whole bunch of paint and then uh, some airbrush cleaner and super glue and stuff over here. I've got a scale. I've got a vise. Uh, this is a six inch vise that I picked up off of uh, Amazon. Um, you definitely want to have some type of a, a vise for holding what you're working on. We've covered this before, but uh, you need to have some type of a mask or respirator. This one's a 3M with replaceable cartridges and pre filters, which is real nice, very comfortable. Then over here, we've got a whole bunch more helping hands. Um, and we've got a cordless drill. And in the end of said cordless drill, I've got a tool for screwing in uh, screw eyes, right? It's got a slot on it. So it grabs a screw eye and turns that in there. I've got a DA sander, a dual action orbital sander. Uh, that helps me to make sure I get some nice rounded edges on the baits and makes things a lot faster than doing it by hand. Uh, we've got some more helping hands over here. We've got some, uh, some wire cutters, which is something else you're going to want because um, you're going to have all kinds of wire all over the place. Um, you know, there's a, a pile of wire there that's, uh, I think, 41 thousandths uh, lock wire. Uh, I use that for, I put it through the eyes and use it to hang baits and stuff. Um, <clears throat> you'll want a pair of split ring pliers. Uh, these things are just, you can't, you can't do this without these. If you're going to be putting on that many split rings, you know, you really, really, you need split ring pliers, right? Um, and then if you're doing, uh, you know, if you're doing screw eye lures, you'll need a, a bunch of screw eyes for correct sizes and, you know, a bunch of split rings and got some glitter back there, some more glitter on the, on the workbench over here. Um, here's the, uh, the epoxy that I'm using, Amazing Clearcast Plus. Um, don't use regular Amazing Clearcast. That does not have the UV protection in it. You really want the UV protection. Um, you are going to want some painter's tape. Uh, I use the blue 3M branded uh, sharp lines. Next up, we've got safety goggles, right, or safety glasses. Make sure that you uh, you don't injure yourself. Uh, we've got a router table here. Um, this is not an absolute necessity, but you know if you're just going to be making baits for yourself or you know a couple one two here there whatever, 
probably aren't going to need a router table, but if you uh, if you want to start really making a lot of baits, uh, a router table will help to speed things along. Um, obviously, we've got a tape measure. Uh, I particularly like this one because it's self-locking. So I don't have to do anything, right? You just pull it out and it locks and holds that distance. And then to coil it back up, you just push the button. Nice, right? So then this here, this is uh, just a little depth marker that I whipped up quick here. Um, you know, you lock the dowel in there with uh, this screw eye there and hold the pencil in with that screw eye there. And, you know, the dowel slides back and forth through the block. And then, you know, I can just put the block up against the side of a lure and run it down to make a line the same distance from the edge on all of them. Uh, so helps to speed things along. Here is the belt sander that uh, I just added to the collection. Previously, I had a, a big bench sander, um, but this belt sander is uh, it's a little faster. I'm still working on getting used to it. Um, it came with a pretty rough belt, so uh, I'm waiting on some, some finer grip belts that chews up material really fast. Uh, but that, I like this one. It's got a, a disc on the side as well, which is nice. Uh, and it's got a table both uh, for the belt and the disc. And it did also come with uh, a miter for this uh, this side over here so very nice next up we've got the bandsaw all right i've just got a a rikon nothing super fancy or expensive gets the job done great but uh, one thing i found that's helpful is you know you've got this uh this track here for miters uh, i got two of those there's the other one uh, so the reason i got two of them is because i've got one of them set to the exact angle that I want to cut the lip slots in my lures. Uh, and I don't want to have to set that again or try and figure that out again. So that one always stays set to that. And then I've got this other one here that I'll adjust and do whatever with. Um, so got a pretty small blade on there, but um, have a couple of other blades. I've got a, a half inch wood slicer, they call it, a resaw blade. Um, and then we've got uh, this drill press here, this is just a master force. I got it at the big box store, but it's variable speed. It's got a digital display on it. Um, it's got a work light and it's got a laser target, right? So you can see where you're gonna put the hole. Uh, it's pretty nice table, you know, move side to side and up and down and you can lock it. Uh, so that's, that's really nice. You'll need a set of uh, drill bits, obviously to use that. And then you'll want a set of uh, Forstner bits as well. Uh, I happen to like Irwin for those, good name in woodworking. Um, and then I've just got another tape measure over here, some safety stuff for use with the bandsaw, the fence that goes with the bandsaw, um, you know, pencil, the drill chuck, key. Um, these pencils here are really nice too. I got these on Amazon. These are uh, red lead. It's a lot easier to see than the, the regular black lead. Um, you're gonna want some type of a, uh, a square to make sure you get all your tools set up properly, get the blades nice and square, the tables nice and square, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, if you're gonna be using power tools, that is. Then we've got a shop vac, uh, and this is a large uh, Craftsman model. I should have got the large one to begin with. I've got a smaller one hanging out under the bench there. But, uh, and then next up is this um, uh, dust deputy here. Uh, you definitely want to get something like this to deal with the dust in the shop. Um, and I like this one here. Um, you know, it's, it's nice. It, it comes with that other bucket over there. It's got wheels on. But um, I like the, uh, the dust deputy because the bucket fills up with sawdust rather than the shop vac, right? So it saves you uh, filters and bags and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you're going to want some type of uh, hose to attach to your tools, right? So I've just got the, the one single 20 foot long hose that I move around from tool to tool and it works out pretty well. Um, you know, I haven't bothered to set up or invest in a, a big fancy, um, you know, multi-tube dust collection system. Uh, to be honest, I don't think that uh, this shop vac here can drive something like that. I think I'd actually have to get a professional dust collector, but whatever. Uh, so next up then, we've got a planer, and this is a DeWalt 635 uh, three-blade planer, and of course we've got 
dust collection on here as well, right, with the reducer to go down to that smaller uh, hose that I've got that's attached to the tools that attaches right onto here as well for when I'm using this guy. But uh, the reason I've got the planer is that uh, it's important for, you know, your, your baits to be straight, the wood for your bait to be straight. Uh, you don't want to don't have it, you know, curved or, or cupped or anything like that. Uh, and now I know a lot of you guys are sitting there and you're saying, oh, well, you should have got a jointer then, not a planer. Well, yeah, yeah hang on. Uh, so if you're starting out with wood that is so badly visibly warped that you think you need a jointer to straighten it out, uh, you probably shouldn't be using that to make baits with to begin with, right? So just those little minor imperfections, uh, you run them through a planer and square it all up nice and, nice and good. Uh, plus this, this helps me get the baits uh, all to a uniform thickness, which is really, really nice. Uh, I, before getting this, I had been resawing them on the bandsaw and then sanding the kerf marks out with the belt or with the, uh, the bench sander. And, and it just, it didn't really make for a uniform thickness, you know, front to back on the, on the wood that I was using then. So, you know, the baits weren't quite exact. Uh, this planer has greatly, greatly sped up that process. Uh, this thing works great. It is crazy loud. Uh, and makes a ridiculous amount of chips though. Uh, you know, if I do one board through here, uh, it will fill that five gallon bucket with chips. So make sure that, uh, you know, your, your wood collection game is on point uh, or your, your chip collection game is on point. Uh, that's what this bag is over here. This is all sawdust. Um, <coughs> so, of course you wanna have a nice big trash can for all the stuff. And then my painting station, we already sort of visited, but uh, just a cardboard box. Got some tape there, my gloves. You definitely need to get some latex gloves and then some uh, belts for the belt sander. Um, wire bending tool. Uh, you, those of you that have watched my uh, how to make a musky bucktail video, I'll throw a link to that up in the cards as well. But there's the wire bending tool from that video, bolts to the corner of the table there. And lastly, I think I did a video on this already, but there's my, um, my shop apron, something that you might think of investing in. You can already see how filthy that thing is. That's uh, everything that's on there did not end up on my clothing, right? So that's nice. And then last up, I suppose we've got, uh, the air compressor that I'm using is a Posh D3000R. Uh, works okay. I wish it had a little bit larger tank. I will probably upgrade it to one with a larger tank at some point in the future. But for now, I think that's about it. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys liked the video, you can go ahead and click the like button down there. If you want to subscribe, I would really appreciate it. My goal is to get one new subscriber with every video I make. So go ahead and click the subscribe button. Should be a little picture now of my truck with a crooked ass trailer behind it down over here in the corner. Go ahead and click that. And if you want to be notified every time I make a video, apparently you've got to ring the bell or some nonsense that you're saying these days, whatever, turn on notifications. They're not on by default any longer. Uh, I guess <laughs> any longer, I guess I changed some time ago. I'm just getting up to speed because I'm new at all this YouTube nonsense. But uh, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you liked it. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.